hello and welcome to my videos where I show you all things fun and pleasurable watercolour paintings for all abilities. So the very first thing I want to talk about is paper and brushes. So this is Archie's paper. Um, you want good quality paper because you don't want to be messing around um, with lesser quality stuff because it's going to buckle and it's going to make you have to do more work and we want to avoid that. Uh, second, you want good brushes. So here are the brushes that I am loving at the moment. Uh, they're mixed squirrel and synthetic um, and they've got really big bellies here um, and what that means is that it's going to hold a lot more uh, water and ink meaning we don't have to refill our brush as much. Um, and I've got my handy dandy tube roller here so if we stuff that in like that it allows us to make the, the brush wider making it easier to grip um, if you've got arthritis or any pain conditions or any decreased function in your hand making it wider means that you can actually um, grip it a lot easier now you can get these this is actually a paint tube from like a foam roller um, but you can get them from OTs you can get them from Clark rubber they're a bit smaller a bit narrower and a bit um, more firm uh, but I really like this because it's softer it means that even if I grip I'm not putting too much pressure through that on my hands um, and that's good for me now I'm just going to take you through we're just going to do some roses because they're fun they're easy to do and you don't really need um, any sort of experience here. Right, I'm going to go with my permanent rose. Make up some here. Um, now, the idea of painting in this style, you can learn to paint from anyone. There's so many videos on YouTube. What I'm showing you is how to paint. Um, if you're particularly limited in either your physicality, pain, that sort of thing. So the first thing we want to make sure is that we're not craning over, we're not leaning our arms on the on the table, we don't have our head hanging directly over the, the painting. We're staying as upright as possible with minimal looking down. So we've got here my paper is a bit far away from my head so I'm not looking straight down. And I'm going to keep it upright posture. And I'm just going to do little little C's here. Now you can notice as soon as I start painting I've got a tremor in my hand. Now this is what prompted me to do these tutorials um, was to show you that even if you can't do realistic work, your hand tremors, you've got paint, you can't use pencils, there's still art that you can do. So I like this sort of loose style because it means that my tremor doesn't matter I'm just going to drop some pigment in places clean our brush. So we're going to do maybe three, one here and one here. I'm going to make a more orange one this time. So I'm just mixing some cadmium yellow with some permanent rose. And we're just going to move. Now we're not going to be um, we're not going to be perfectionistic about this. It's loose. We want it to be. Now, if you have a hand tremor like I do and you struggle, I often use my pinky and I balance my hand either upright like that or flat. Um, just be careful of your paper. If you really need it, you can get um, some more paper. your paper. I'm just doing a little one here. It was a bit too far away. 
and I was reaching a bit and it wasn't comfortable. So I'm just gonna drop some colors in and move on. So art, art as art therapy, it shouldn't hurt you. If you find you have problems with static posturing, then move about, you know, do one rose or, you know, leaf, or whatever it is that you're doing, and then get up and move around a bit so that you're not in a stagnant posture. So I'm currently standing. I have a sit stand table, um, thanks to the government and the start grant and BMAC. Um, and it, you can hear it. So it's electric and it goes up and down. So I'm currently standing while I'm painting this, but if I get a bit sore, I will just lower the table and I'll sit down. Um, and that allows me, and that allows me to prevent that sort of static posturing, which is, um, which is so detrimental. So see how my hand tremor is actually, it's adding to this. If I, if my hand didn't shake, I'd be prompted to try and do straight lines, whereas that's not what I want. So that's actually helping here. I'm just gonna get some clean water. Now I've just slicked that, it's fine. I'm gonna go and splatter the edges because a lot of the time with my trauma and stuff, I often drop paint on the paper. Look, if I was painting for someone that this was paid, I would take great care not to, but the, I'm painting for myself. We're learning how to paint for pleasure. And so we're going to come up with a style that brings us joy and that's not gonna give us stress. So let's do another one down here so we're just working on our little our little C's and then we're widening them out I'm just gonna leave this one as a little one I think And then what we're going to do is we're going to add some leaves. I think I'm going to do one more. So we want to make sure we are leaving a lot of white space. Now I'm going to drop some of this permanent rose in here. And then we're going to do some leaves now. I've been told by a few of my students that leaves are just so endlessly satisfying. So we're going to move to our really big brush here. This is a 24. And now I don't need to put a foam roller on this because it is nice and fat and I don't grip it. And the technique that we want to use here is not 
a gripping technique. We want to be really, really loose. So first we're going to mix up a nice green. So I've got some leftover green here, but I'm going to use an indigo. That gives us a really nice dark blue. Then I'm going to add some lemon yellow to that. And a little bit of yellow ochre. There we go. Now I find here with roses, they have sort of jaggedy leaves. I've really not done a whole lot with this. A proper leaf technique is you push down on the belly and then flatten out. And actually let's do that because that's it's a lot smoother. That looks nice. Okay. So I need to mix up some more paint because this brush eats paint. It really does. So we've got indigo. Our yellow umber. I mean our yellow ochre. And a bit of yellow, lemon yellow. Just to lighten that up a bit. So push down on the belly. Up. Now where you lift up, particularly with these big brushes, where you lift up is where your paint's going to end up. So our paint's going to end up there. We can bring it back. And that gives us a lot down here. You want to make sure you've got a lot of water in these big brushes see here this is dry this is dry on dry sort of thing you can see the paper it's not bad it's not anything it's just is what it is and then you'll see the difference with the wet on dry see how you can see where the ink ends up so we've got a lot of ink in our brush and that's what we want but I'm just going to take it out of that end there There we go. So making sure we've got a lot of ink in our brush. We'll do some more here. Push down, bring up. Push down, bring up. See how easy that is? I'm not gripping my brush. I'm not being overly pedantic about what they look like. We're just making sure we've got lots of ink in our brush. We've got a really big brush so that we're not fussing with it. Push down and then lift to the point as you go up. Very simple. Very kind on the hands too. And that way you can do your little focal flowers. And then you fill the paper and create the composition with leaves saves your hands I always I always feel a lot happier when I've got a finished work and so I often finish it off with the leaves push down drag lift up easy okay probably gonna leave it there put one more here and maybe one here just because I love painting leaves. And no sort of artlessness complete without saying, don't leave your brushes in your water. It's the number one way to kill your brushes. And if, like me, you have good quality brushes, and I do recommend that, they are expensive, but it saves your hands. And that's why I've, got, I've splurged on them. But here we go, you know, it's not perfect, but it was fun to create. I'm not sore afterwards. I've saved my hands. I've done some art therapy, so I'm feeling relaxed and revived um, and ready to do it again if I need to. I can do another one today or I can go, you know what? I just need to walk, need to have a, a rest. 
um, and do another tomorrow. Alright, it's cheaper than therapy. See you later.